one of the things that I haven't really talked a lot about, you've probably noticed, all four of these outputs down here are at the moment giving us the exact same thing. What sets tides apart from other modules like this, other envelopes or LFOs or oscillators, is that typically those other forms will either give you one output or they'll give you like a positive and a negative output. A lot of envelope modules will give you a positive version of the waveform and a negative version of the waveform. What Tides does is it gives you four outputs. And then there's this last mode and knob that I haven't talked about. And more or less what happens is, depending on the mode that you're in, it will change all of these outputs relative to each other. And there are three to pick from. You basically get four copies of something, but based on the position of the shift knob, it's going to be varied. So let me walk you through these now. Okay, so uh, like I've been doing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of just go through these quickly, and uh, it'll make more sense once we start doing some, some demo patches, what exactly these things do. So there are actually four modes up here. You can see that there's three illuminated, so there's a green mode, a yellow mode, and a red mode. There's also an extinguished mode, which I'll talk about at the end. Anyways, this first mode, this green mode, is levels mode. And you can think of levels mode as, imagine if you had an LFO or an envelope and you had four copies. What happens is the shift knob basically becomes a crossfader answering their question of how much of a control voltage goes to which of the ports. Now wa watch closely the LEDs here as I turn the shift knob. So I'm going to go all the way to the left here. And you can see that as I slowly scrub to the right, it's changing which port gets the current value of the function. So you see here how, how as I was going through that, starts at 1, goes to 2, then over to 3, then over to 4. Uh, if I plug those into the scope here, patch this in real quick. So I'm going to start by patching into 2 and 3, and you can see when I'm straight up and down, I'm getting no signal. And then as I pan over to the left here, I'll leave it here for a moment, and you can see that we're getting some of the signal on the first port and some of the signal on the second port. Remember, green is positive voltage and red is negative voltage because we are in a bipolar mode right now. And if I scrub the knob over a little bit more, you can see that we've kind of moved. This first port is no longer getting a value, and down here you can see that this first jack is not getting a value. But we're now sending some of the value to the second one and some of the value to the third one. If I was to go back a little bit, kind of tweak around and find a point in the middle. Now if you look very carefully, you can see most of the value is now going to the second port. and a tiny little bit of the value is going to the first port. And if you look over here, you can see that that red line, let me speed this up, you can see that red line is getting a little bit of fluctuation up and down. Basically, I think of this levels mode as really a crossfader. You've got four ports, and you can basically crossfade how much of that voltage each of them receives. Likewise, if you go the other way around, it basically just does the same thing but in reverse. All right, so the next mode, the next mode, the orange mode, is, uh, so the orange mode is a little tricky, honestly, because it's going to have a different behavior depending on which of the modes here that you're using. Mutable Instruments calls this orange mode the, the time mode, but I don't know, I think that's a little bit of a confusing way of describing it. If you're in cyclic mode, what this will do is it will shift the phase. If you're in either of the envelope modes, so AD or AR mode, then it will shift the skew or the slope of the shape. And let me show you what I mean by that. So by the way, you can see, again, right up and down at 12 o'clock, and so that basically means that we have no shift effect happening. Now I am in, I'm in cyclic mode right now. I'm going to take these two values, so the first and the fourth. As I scrub to the left or the right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knock these two signals out of phase with each other. So watch over here. You can see that right now, the red and the green, they're almost perfectly on top of each other. In this case, red is the first port and green is the fourth port. 
And as I turn over here, I've rotated that a bit, and you can see that they're now almost completely inverted phase-wise of each other. So you can see how they're really out of phase. As I pull it back, you can see they slowly start to come in phase with each other. So if you've ever used, um, there are other modules on the market that have multiple LFO outputs. A lot of times they'll have eight outputs and they'll give you phased copies of, of that. Tides basically lets you simulate that by choosing where you set this shift knob. You're changing the phase location. Now, the tricky thing about this mode is if you are in the either of the envelope modes, you're going to get a different behavior. And let me show you that real quick. All right, so I'm gonna grab a clock signal over here. Uh, this looks like it's probably an eighth note. I'm gonna bring that into bin seek, and then I will take the output of that and we'll pass it into trigger. All right, so over here, you can see that I've kind of got my time-based function going on. And again, the values are stacked on top of each other because we have the shift knob at left and right. But watch what happens as I turn this. This might be kind of hard to visualize, so let me do a quick sonic example because it's a little easier to hear uh, at audio rates. Okay, I threw together a quick little patch here. Let me explain what's going on. So I'm using Mutable Instruments Plates as my oscillator. That has two outputs, uh, the main and an auxiliary. I have routed each one into a separate copy of ripples, and then I'm taking the output of ripples, and that's basically going to be left and right audio. Now, what Tides is going to be modulating is it's going to be modulating the frequency cutoff. Okay, so here you see that there's not a ton of difference happening, and that's because my shift is right up and down. As I move this shift, they will start to be skewed different from each other, and we'll get a really different shape, so have a listen. Now, one thing I'll make mention of while I'm in this mode and sort of demonstrating this is all of the features of tights that we've talked about apply even if you're in envelope mode. So for example, how many envelopes let you wave fold that? We can also skew it a bit ourselves, or we can start to change where on the wavetable we're at. Oh, that sounds kind of cool. All right, so two more modes to go. The third mode is uh, the red mode, and this is frequencies mode. You notice on the module it has like a little a multiplication and division. What this is is uh, so let me let me just show you on the scope here. Uh, when I move the shift knob, you can see that things are operating a little different, and if you look very closely. If I was to zoom in here, you can see that what's actually happening is the waves are now mathematically related to each other. So the red wave in this particular setting is exactly one half of the frequency of the green wave. And so what we're getting is we're getting these interesting mathematical relationships. So, so right now, the difference between one and four is that we have a one to two relationship. This, this mode 
is by far my favorite mode because there's tons of things that you can do with this. And the magic really comes as you start to mix in the other modes. So right now we are in low frequency mode. And so if I put this over to skew, what we actually have happening right now is this is a polymeter. If we were to use both of these values as a clock signal, we'll do a little demo of that later. We can also vary it even more and get these really interesting polyrhythmic type of things happening. I'll, I'll do a demo on this. I think this is one of the neatest features of Tides. Another thing is if we were to change that up and we were to do it at audio rate, well, I won't spoil it. Let me, let me plug in some audio and I'll let you hear it. All right, so I've done a little bit of patching. I've basically taken all four of the outputs of Tides and I have routed them into a four channel mixer and let's have a listen. Okay, so right now, because the shift knob is basically straight up and down, we're just hearing unison. So we're hearing more or less four of the exact same waveforms stacked on top of each other. But just have a listen as to what happens when I turn the shift knob here. Okay, so what's happening? You might have sound, you might have heard something that sounded familiar. And what it's doing is it's changing all of the ratios of frequencies of these outputs to be somehow mathematically related to each other. And the reason why those sound familiar is because you're basically hearing certain kinds of chords. I mean, a major chord is four to five to six. And as you start taking frequencies of oscillating functions and you represent them against each other mathematically, well, you end up with stuff that sounds like chords. There are not pre-built chords here in Tides, that's just taking whatever frequencies you have dialed in over here and playing them back relative to each other. There are more to the left which have different relationships and they're going to sound a little bit more minor. In fact, uh, I'm going to turn on some reverb and delay. I have used this before in patches, and just this feature of Tides alone is so fun to play with. Let me turn up the mix on that reverb and delay to make it sound a bit more ambient. We'll dial down that low pass gate. All right, so obviously I'm just sort of playing with this by uh, twiddling knobs, but you could sequence the position of the shift knob with a non-quantized sequencer, and you could actually do that in an order that you want. So here's another use case of tides. <laughs> it's a chord generator. All right, so there's one last mode that I haven't showed you, and that will kind of end our tour of the knobs of Tides. And that is, there's a fourth mode here. If you press it enough times that the LED is extinguished, you're kind of in a like a, like a basic mode. Um, what happens here in this mode is the first value, this first output here, this is your main output of whatever else Tides is doing. So you can see here, I'm just getting a real slow LFO out. So in this fourth unextinguished mode, this is always your basic mode. What you get on this next one is, let's say that I was to change this to sort of kind of a weird shape, so maybe something like that. What you get on the second output is you get the raw triangle core output that is behind tides and it'll be synchronized. So here, if you look closely, you can see the red is the base triangle shape 
and the green is we've gone through the, the shape knob and the smoothness and all that stuff. See here how the smoothness is not affecting the triangle part. The other two things that you get is this third one is a trigger at the start of the attack and the fourth one is a trigger at the end of the attack. So if I patch into the third one here, you can see that you get this nice little, nice little gate signal here when the attack phase is completing, and this one we get a trigger when the release phase has completed. So you can use that to, to trip off other interesting things in your system, but that's the fourth mode.